Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? May only God's word be spoken. May only God's word be heard. Amen. Amen. They say that confession is good for the soul, whoever they is. Um, so this morning I would like to start with a confession. I have to pray hard to resist the temptation at times to be snarky and disrespectful of other Christian traditions. And sometimes I fail to resist. I can even be snarky about other Episcopal congregations if I'm not careful. If I don't check myself before I wreck myself, as a friend of mine told me recently. There's a story about this. Um, but let me give you a little background. Jody and I drive I-680 home from church every, on Sundays. And every Sunday I notice a sign on what looks like a warehouse it says Omaha Bible Church. Now y'all, I confess, I've got a lot of assumptions about the Omaha Bible Church. I assume by the industrial shape of their building that they have little Christian imagery or symbols in their worship space. No stained glass, no crosses, no doves or shepherds or sheep. I assume that they have a non-liturgical style of worship. No scripture readings. They have praise songs instead of hymnody. And probably no Eucharist every Sunday. I assume that if they do celebrate the Eucharist on occasion, they probably call it the Lord's Supper. And don't refer to it as the body and blood of Christ. I'll even go so far as to assume they use grape juice instead of wine. But all of my assumptions about the Omaha Bible Church are being called into question. God is calling me to account through a chance encounter in Panera Bread this past Friday morning. Before I tell you that story, I need to give you some little background from last Thursday night. We've been doing a test group of a prayer and evangelism program called Unbinding the Gospel. About 12 of us have been meeting on Thursday nights the last six weeks, praying together and talking about sharing our faith. This past Thursday night, we talked a lot about deliberately praying for God to put people in our paths that need to hear the good news. We talked about being open after those prayers to moving and to the moving and nudging of the Holy Spirit, being open and aware of those opportunities during the regular course of our days when our faith can be shared. So Friday morning, I'm grabbing breakfast at the Panera on Saddle Creek before I had a hospital visit to make. I'm sitting there looking around at the other patrons. And I said to myself, I need to pray. I need to be open like we were talking about in, prayer, in last night in the prayer room. So I asked God simply to give me someone to talk to. Now, this is another point where I need to confess yet some more. I was thinking that God would provide someone that I could minister to. I am a paid believer after all. That's my job. I'm supposed to minister to people. I didn't think that God would supply someone that would minister to me. I thought I would be sharing the good news. That I would be the evangelist. Turns out I was meant to listen and be called to repentance my own self. As I was sitting there, I noticed a woman near me pull out a workbook and start studying it. Any of you have ever been to a coffee shop, you know that this is a common sight. But then I noticed the title of her book. I couldn't quite see it, but it looked like it said New Testament Greek Primer. So I had to say yet another quick prayer. One of, All right, Lord, what's going on here? The spirit nudged, and so I asked, excuse me, ma'am, 
What's that you're reading? She showed me the title, and indeed, it was a New Testament Greek primer. We began to chat, and it turns out she's a member of the Omaha Bible Church. <laughs> and she was early to a class in Biblical Greek held at Panera. In fact, there was already one class going on, and she was waiting for the second class to start. And that's not the only class she's taking right now. As we chatted more, she pulled out a huge systematic theology text. It's about four inches thick. And she proudly proclaimed that they were almost to the end of it. She even opened it up and showed me where she was highlighting stuff in the last few chapters. None of you go into my office and pull out a systematic theology text and look in the back. You will not find highlighting. <laughs> she isn't a seminary student or even looking to be a pastor. They just place an importance on the study of scripture and theology by adults. I was floored. I was called to repent. Any arrogance I might have, any overdeveloped pride about the Episcopal Church in general, or the Church of the Resurrection specifically, was called on the carpet in that moment. Y'all, I and we try very hard to offer high quality adult Christian education here. And I've got some skills at persuasion, I do believe. But I doubt I could get 20 of us to meet at Panera at the crack of dawn once a week to learn to read the New Testament in the original Greek. <laughs> and to be honest, I doubt I could teach it well either. As I told the woman at Panera, I sucked at Greek in seminary. <laughs> I took five semesters of it and got A's in every one of them, but it just didn't stick. Now, I'm still betting there's a lot about the Omaha Bible Church that I would neither like nor agree with. But I learned that they are better at adult Christian ed than we are. And I learned yet again what happens when I make an assumption. In Panera Friday morning, I think I might have felt like Peter did at Cornelius' house. Peter walks into a Gentile's house expecting to bring the good news, maybe even looking down on these pagan Gentiles, only to have the Holy Spirit seize the situation before he could even deliver his message. He thought he was going there as a reluctant minister, his martyr complex fully revved up. But it turns out he was an unsuspecting witness of God at work. I hope I grow from the experience at Panera. I know that I'm going to continue to pray for openness, to being open to the nudging of the Spirit in every given moment. Some of those moments, I bet I will be the minister. In others, I'll be the one ministered to. In some, I'll share the good news. I'll be the evangelist. And others, I'll get to hear the good news deep in my soul. Regardless, I know God is at work. And we would all be blessed to pay attention and witness God's work. Now, my brothers and sisters, we are all standing in the need of prayer. Prayer is the preparation of the whole self to rest in God. It is the letting go of our nonsense to make space for God in us. It is the opening of our souls to be directed by the Holy Spirit in all moments and in all things. But my brothers and sisters, be forewarned. When we pray, God gets to work. And most of God's work will be to change us, not someone else. When we open ourselves to the Spirit's presence and control, our highly valued and deeply guarded assumptions and even our beliefs will not be safe. When we are truly open, nothing is off limits to God. 
But while it can be a challenge to let go of the barriers within us, a challenge to grow in relationship with God, even though growing pains will occur as we become more loving and open to all God's children, truly I tell you, there is no more worthwhile endeavor. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, I invite us to be open to God, completely open. I invite us all to pray fervently, daily, consistently to be open to the Spirit. And when the Spirit nudges, my prayer is that we will answer the Spirit's call. Amen.